Hello viewers. Today I shall explain about the properties of matter waves. I hope you remember the facts about matter waves suggested by Louis D. Broglie. The objective of today's talk is to assist you to learn about the properties of matter waves and solve a few problems. The learning outcomes will be that you will be able to relate dual nature of light with particles, explain matter waves, discuss the properties of matter waves, and you will be able to solve simple problems. Before starting the topic, let us review about matter waves. We know the universe is made up of matter and radiation. We know radiation has dual nature. It has particle nature, it has wave nature. The particle nature could be understood from Planck's quantum theory. The photoelectric effect, Compton effect were proved based on Planck's quantum theory. The wave nature of light could be understood from the phenomena like refraction, interference, diffraction, polarization. Now, let us look at the matter. Matter is made up of particles. So matter has particle nature. We also know nature loves symmetry. When the nature is matter and radiation, and radiation has dual nature, surely matter also must have dual nature. Because nature loves symmetry, he assumed and predicted that matter made up of particles must also have a wave nature. The de Broglie hypothesis could be explained as a moving particle is associated with a wave known as de Broglie wave. The wavelength of matter wave is given by lambda equal to h by mv or it is equal to h by momentum p where m is the mass of the material particle v is the velocity and p is the momentum of the particle now let us look at the properties of matter waves the matter waves wavelength lambda is given by h by mv so from this we can predict many properties H is Planck's constant and from this formula we can say lambda is inversely proportional to mass. So the first property, let us say when the particle is lighter, the wavelength associated with the particle will be greater. The lighter the particle, the greater is the wavelength associated with it. The second property can be derived from this expression lambda is inversely proportional to velocity of the particle the smaller is the velocity of the particle the greater is the wavelength associated with it when v is small lambda will be greater now what small value we can assume for the particle first let us say the velocity of the particle v equal to zero when v becomes zero lambda becomes infinity anything having infinite dimension cannot be measured at all so and when v becomes zero lambda becomes infinity becomes indeterminate and when v becomes infinity lambda becomes zero this shows that matter waves are generated by the motion of particles we should consider the motion of the particle velocity equal to zero leading to lambda infinity velocity equal to infinity leads to lambda equal to zero so leaving these two conditions aside let us imagine various values for velocity accordingly the wavelength could be determined so the motion of the particles only generating the matter waves these waves are produced whether the particles are charged particles or uncharged particles. 
the formula for lambda does not involve any charge. So very clearly telling matter waves could be obtained for particles which are charged as well as uncharged as lambda is independent of charge. This fact reveals that these waves are not electromagnetic waves but are a new kind of waves. The matter waves are a new kind of waves and surely not electromagnetic waves because electromagnetic waves are produced by moving charged particles. The fourth property is the velocity of matter wave depends on the velocity of matter particle that is constant while the velocity of electromagnetic wave is constant. The velocity of matter wave depends on the velocity of matter particle that is not constant while the velocity of electromagnetic waves is constant. The velocity of matter wave is greater than the velocity of light. It's a stunning result. The velocity of matter wave is greater than the velocity of light. This can be proved as follows. A particle in motion with associated matter wave has two different kinds of velocities. One referring to the mechanical motion of the particle and are presented by V. The velocity of matter wave is greater than the velocity of light. This can be proved as follows. A particle in motion with associated matter wave has two different velocities. One referring to the mechanical motion of the particle and is represented by V. And the second velocity related to the propagation of the wave represented by W. We know E equal to H nu. And from Einstein's mass energy relation, E equal to mc square. This Planck's law refers to E. Einstein's relation also refers to E. Therefore, H nu equal to mc square. From this expression, let us find out nu equal to mc squared by h. We also know another formula for wave velocity. In general, we write c equal to nu lambda. Here, the matter wave velocity is represented by w. So, let us write w equal to nu lambda. From the previous expression, nu equal to mc squared by h into lambda d probably expression lambda equal to h by mv. H, h cancels. m, m cancels. So the material wave velocity w equal to c squared by v. It's a very stunning expression because Einstein in his relativity theory he said no particle can take up the velocity of light in vacuum. But here, the matter wave velocity W becomes C squared by V. The V, particle velocity, cannot exceed C. Hence, we find W is proportional to C squared. That is, the matter wave velocity is greater than the velocity of light. We can understand this unexpected result by considering the wave velocity wave velocity or the matter wave velocity. The other name for this is phase velocity and group velocity. The next property is that the wave and particle aspects of a moving body can never appear together in an experiment. You cannot see the particle nature and the wave nature simultaneously at the same time. What we can say is that waves have particle-like properties and particles have wave-like properties and the concepts are separately linked. Matter-wave representation is only symbolic representation. The last property of matter-wave is that the wave nature of matter introduces 
an uncertainty in the location of the position of the particle because a wave cannot be set exactly at this point or at that point suppose if you switch on the tube light the room is filled with light rays light waves so we know light is made up of photons as well as waves so when you switch on the lamp the room gets filled with light waves now if you ask wave could be the photons so what what we say is wave the light is very strong they you can expect the particles the photons to be present same way in matter waves also if you want to look at where is the particle because a moving particle is associated with matter waves so matter waves are there and the particle is also there where is the particle so what you can say the particle can be found out where the wave is very strong and you cannot find the particle where the wave is very weak so i have taken a particle which is moving so a moving particle is associated with a wave like this so if you want to see wave nature and particle nature together are they but any one only you can realize if you if you look at the wave nature and if you want to predict where is the particle what from this property we understand is where the wave is strong you can expect the particle to be present there you cannot go and look for the particle where the wave is very small so where the wave is very strong they you can predict the presence of particle in another diagram also this can be represented the wave generated by the moving particle can be considered like that and where the wave is having maximum amplitude you can expect the particle to be present so these are the various properties of matter waves all this could be realized from the formula lambda equal to h by mv the first property says lambda is inversely proportional to mass of the particle the lighter the particle the wavelength of the matter wave will be greater and when velocity is very small wavelength is very much greater moving particle produces matter waves these matter waves are similar to electromagnetic waves but not electromagnetic waves because electromagnetic waves could be produced only by moving charged particle whereas the formula lambda equal to h by mv involves no charge there so matter waves can be produced by moving charged particle or moving uncharged particle and moreover electromagnetic wave can travel with constant velocity whereas the matter waves can travel with velocity w which is purely dependent on the velocity of the movement of the particle and the wave nature and particle nature are two aspects of matter these two are separate and two aspects of the same matter matter can behave like a wave matter can behave like particle nature also when you look at the particle nature wave nature could not be realized when wave nature could be seen the particle nature could not be realized but so in the same experiment you cannot expect both nature to be realized there is uncertainty to locate the position of the particle a moving particle is producing matter waves but where is the position of the particle it is very difficult because you can't say that the wave is only here or there so finally what you can say is where the wave amplitude is more you can find or you can locate the position of the particle so these are the properties of matter waves now with these concepts let us do some more problems determine the de broglie wavelength for an alpha particle traveling at 0.015 velocity of light right so de broglie wavelength all of us know lambda equal to h by mv now 
m is mass of the particle v is velocity of the particle velocity of the particle is given but mass of alpha particle is not given so we must know what is alpha particle alpha particle is nothing but helium nucleus and it can be represented by helium two electrons with the two protons and two neutrons so mass of alpha particle is mass of the nucleus of helium which contains two protons and two neutrons so mass of alpha particle equal to mass of two protons plus mass of two neutrons we know mass of proton is 1.67262 into 10 power minus 27 kg and mass of neutron is 1.67493 into 10 power minus 27 kg so using this formula you can find out mass of alpha particle so 2 into mass of proton plus 2 into mass of neutron so which comes to be 6.6951 into 10 power minus 27 kg now using this formula therefore lambda equal to h value Planck's constant and this is mass of alpha particle and this is velocity of the alpha particle it is given as 0 0.015 c that means 0 0.015 times the velocity of light so velocity of light is 3 into 10 power 8 so this comes out to be 2.2 into 10 power minus 14 meter let us do one more problem an electron is accelerated by a potential difference to 20 volts determine the de broglie wavelength for the electron in the previous class we derived various formula for wavelength of matter waves now depending on the data you must choose the right formula now we are asked to find out the wavelength of electron and it is accelerated in a potential difference of 220 volts. So what formula we can choose here? Lambda equal to H by square root of 2mqv. So Planck's, H is Planck's constant. This is mass of the electron. All of us know it is 9.1 into 10 power minus 31 kg. And this is charge of electron. And V is given as 220 volts. Now, substituting the data in this formula, you can find out lambda equal to 0 0.828 into 10 power minus 10 meters. Now, this is electron. Electron is very smaller. So, wavelength is greater. You are getting 10 power minus 10 meter. In the previous problem, we calculated lambda for alpha particle alpha particle is heavier so the wavelength we got something into 10 power minus 14 meter so when the particle is heavier wavelength will be lesser when the particle electron is smaller lighter and its wavelength becomes greater so this problem verifies the two properties when the mass of the particle is less wavelength will be more when the mass of the particle is more wavelength is smaller one more problem in a research laboratory electrons are accelerated to speed of 6 into 10 power 6 meters per second near to the laboratory a 1.0 into 10 power minus kg speck of dust falls through the air at a speed of 0 0.020 meter per second we know our air is filled with dust particles these dust particles are falling with the velocity 0 0.020 meter per second now you are asked to find out wavelength for the electrons that are accelerated in the laboratory and the dust particle so the same problem only but a comparison could be made here here two types of particles we have taken one is electron another is mud particle right let us see for electron we know lambda equal to h by mv mass of the electron we know velocity of the electron is given here substituting this you get the answer 1.2 into 10 power minus 10 meter 
Now for the test particle, you find out what is lambda. Same formula. So mass of dust particle is given as 1 into 10 power minus 9 kg. Look at in this expression, mass of electron is 9.11 into 10 power minus 31 kg. Now here, dust particle is having 10 power minus 9 kg. Very clearly telling mud particle is heavier. So you can expect the wavelength to be smaller. Let us see. Substitute all the data and the answer tells that 3.3 into 10 power minus 23 meter. Once again, this particular problem is verifying the concept that lambda is inversely proportional to mass of the particle. If mass is small, the wavelength is greater. If mass is heavier, then wavelength is smaller. Here you see 10 power minus 10 meter. 10 power minus 23 meter. This is very, very, very small. Almost we cannot, our eyes cannot see the matter waves or any instrument cannot detect the matter waves associated with the heavier particle. So one more problem. An electron microscope uses 40 kilo electron volts electrons. Find the wavelength of this electron. So 40 kilo electron volts, which means energy of the electron is 40 kilo electron volts. We know lambda equal to h by square root of 2m qv, right? This qv is energy. So this has to be replaced by this data. Energy E is replaced by QV. So H is this 2 into mass of the electron, charge of the electron, 40 into kilo electron volts. Kilo is 10 Q. Okay, so you, you have that QV. QV is energy. If you substitute, you are getting this answer. Next one, calculate de Broglie wavelength of everyday objects. So you would have watched tennis game, okay? The ball will be moving from this side to this side. If the mass of the tennis ball is 60 grams and its velocity is this, what is its momentum? Momentum is equal to m into v. So mass of the ball 60 grams. We always do problems in terms of SI units. So mass should be expressed in terms of kilogram. So 60 gram is equal to 60 into 10 power minus 3 kilogram into velocity is 45 meter per second. So d Broglie wavelength lambda equal to h by mv. mv already you have calculated. Substitute here you are getting. Look at the power 10 power minus 34. Tennis ball is 60 gram in weight. So huge. So the wavelength is so small. One more problem is given. You have to calculate the probably wavelength of a 1 kilo electron volt electron. Okay. So kinetic energy is given 1 kilo electron volt. 1 kilo means 10 Q. Electron volt means 1.6 into 10 power minus 90. So E equal to half 10 D square. Just multiply and divide by m, you will be getting half m squared b squared by m. So momentum mv is square root of 2 me 2 m and e is already given here. Substitute, get the answer. That is your momentum. Then d Broglie wavelength lambda equal to h by mv and calculate what is the wavelength associated with 1 kilo electron volt electron. With this, I wind up today's talk. I hope you have understood the properties of matter waves and solving some problems would help you to understand the properties of the matter waves. Thank you all.